Come learn some ducking science, duck onto science in my class. Today we're going to be talking about solution math. Everybody's favorite topic I know is math, but we're going to get through this together. I promise you, let's jump right into it. This will go, this is going to be in relation to the horrors of Flint, Michigan. We've been talking a lot about uh, water contamination in terms of my own home water that I tested here in Portsmouth, Virginia. In addition to the new uh, things coming up in the news about uh, Newark, New Jersey, also being a problem with lead contamination. So we're gonna kind of recap on that briefly first, and then we're gonna dive right in head first into equations with parts per million and parts per billion, using those to calculate. And then what are these so-called elusive parts that I keep referring to somewhere out there? Who knows what these parts actually are? My goodness, the is crazy, right? I mean, that's pretty much what everyone says anyway. So. And then we're going to practice some of those questions along the way. And then I've got a few practice questions at the end of the slides, very end of the lesson for you to try on your own time over the next week. And I will recap and answer those questions in my next math video so you can make sure you did them right. Let's jump right into it, shall we? So first and foremost, I'm going to play this five minute video for you about Flint, Michigan. Uh, if you watched Flint, Michigan before in my previous video, feel free to skip forward five minutes and get right into the math stuff. However, if you haven't, I highly encourage you to just kind of get this background information so it leads you into why we're doing this math anyways. What's the point? Uh, also kind of listen for the answers that I, I've kind of prompted you for in these questions here. The what the water was in the pipe. So length of time is what I'm looking for there. And they'll say that in the video as well. And then I want you to listen for the numerical values of the parts per billion that was in the Walter family's tap water and what is normally the cause for concern. I'm going to disappear so you can watch this video in peace without my ugly face on it. Later. was subtle. So subtle, Leanne Waters wouldn't have been blamed for missing it. Okay, look right at me. Keep your head straight. How about over here? How many? One. Okay, good job. Look up. Look down. Do, do you have any, do, do your fingers feel numb at all? But one day she looked at Gavin and then looked at his twin brother Garrett side by side. The difference was staggering. The size he is right now is pretty much the size he was last February, February 5th. Um, of 2015. So oh, almost a year ago. Almost a year ago. ago, yes. How much does he weigh versus his twin? He's 35.8 pounds and his twin is 53 pounds. For months they had been drinking the same water, but Gavin was showing the effects of being poisoned by lead. And such is the nature of lead poisoning. It can affect people very differently, even twins. Do you know what the number was? 6.5. What, and what is normal? Um, nothing. There's no safe exposure to lead. It's a mantra repeated by doctors all over the world. No lead, not even a little bit is acceptable because we know more than ever what it does to the body. When lead is ingested or inhaled, no organ in the body is spared. Lead even attacks the DNA, affecting not just you, but your future children. All of it essentially irreversible. Equally frustrating, the symptoms could show up now or years from now. Wait, watch, and see. How do you live your life like that? Seven. He's four. The lead was coming from the corroded pipes carrying water. The longer the water was in the pipes, the more hazardous it became. One of the problems is that the Walters house is one of the furthest away from the treatment facility. It partly explains why the testing here was among the highest, 13,000 parts per billion. To give you some context, five parts per billion would be cause for concern. 5,000 parts per billion is associated with toxic waste. This home, 13,000 parts per billion. But of course, it's not just one home. It's an entire community here in Flint. 100,000 people live here, 10%, 10,000 of whom are under the age of six. And they're the ones who are most at risk. When pediatricians hear anything about lead, we, we absolutely freak out. It wasn't a freak out at first. But doctors in Flint started hearing whispers about elevated lead levels in the water in 2014. So Dr. Mona Hanna-Atisha started looking at lead levels in her young patients. And what she found was shocking. 
the percentage of children with lead poisoning doubled in the city of Flint. And in some neighborhoods, it actually tripled. She sounded the alarm to state officials as loudly as she could, but no one listened. Instead, we were attacked. So I was called an unfortunate researcher, uh, that I was uh, causing near hysteria, and that the state numbers were not consistent with our findings. Maybe denial was so easy because of this. Flint, a city surrounded by some of the largest freshwater lakes in the world, was now delivering some of the world's most contaminated water to its citizens. In October of 2014, General Motors, you say, stopped using the water because it was corroding their parts. Right. That seems like a pretty obvious clue. Yeah, so red flags, like loud alarms should have been going off in people's brains. If it's corroding engine parts, what is it doing to our plumbing that is predominantly lead-based? Water that could corrode engine parts. Just imagine what it was doing to the body and brain of Gavin Walters. These kids did nothing wrong. They did nothing wrong except being poor. In May, Professor Mark Edwards from Virginia Tech and Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha sounded an alarm about lead in Flint's water. The governor says, look, you can have anything you want. Uh, anything, Mona. I want a rewind button to April 2014. <laughs> um, that's what I want. Um, because you can't undo this. You cannot undo this. All right, I'm going to kind of pause it there. That gives you the gist of what we're interested in talking about here and why. So let's jump into the answers for these questions on the video first and foremost. The longer the water was in the pipes, the more hazardous it became. So the longer it kind of saturated in there, the more oxidants could pull lead off of the piping and introduce lead as a soluble aqueous unit into the solution that then people were getting out of their tap water and ingesting uh, as drinking water so or cooking with it as well so big problem there uh, how many parts per billion well if you were listening real close you would have heard that 13,000 parts per billion is what was found in the Walters household tap water uh, those poor uh, twin boys they're definitely getting uh, lots of exposure to lead and we're going to calculate just how much that was here in a few minutes. Uh, how many parts per billion is normally a cause for concern? Well, normally even just five parts per billion. Of course, the EPA max level is 15, as we've discussed in previous videos. However, even just having the slightest amount of lead is a cause for concern, which is why I was a little concerned with Portsmouth water having two parts per billion of lead overall, and also why I'm still awaiting the results from my home lead test. So we'll, we're going to find that out, and I'm going to snip that into the last video for my home water test. We're going to do that. Alrighty. So first and foremost, if we are going to use this information and calculate how much that truly is, what what is that amount? Parts per million and parts per billion are kind of elusive things. So I want to make sure that we can kind of have an equation and plug and chug so that we have an actual value of a mass of chemical that's in our water. So that's what we're going to use these equations for. So again, just as a recap, parts per million is ppm and parts per billion is ppb. And we're going to use the following two equations. I encourage you to write them down. They will be on previous or future slides as well that you can reference, but good to have them in your own notes, your own kind of little practice there. I encourage you to try it along with me. Have a piece of paper, grab your calculator. If you've got one of these, they're pretty much like your lifeline when it comes to chemistry, math from high school onwards for the rest of your life. So definitely useful to have one of those nearby or even just a normal calculator works great too. We're just talking multiply, divide here. So no biggie, but quite large numbers and small numbers. So scientific calculators are helpful. So your first equation is meant for calculating parts per million. You can see that that's what that equals to. So if we take the grams of a solute, again, that is the thing that gets dissolved and we divide it by our ratio there. We divide it by our grams of solution. So how much solution do we have? And if you recall from my previous video, which will also be linked below if you want to recap on that, this is a ratio. So very similar to a concentration. We have solute over solution or solute over solvent, which gives us a concentration. 
So basically this is a ratio of concentration times, guess what that number is? A million. Because it's parts per million, that's where that kind of comes from. So we've got our ratio times a million, that gives us parts per million. Now if we want to find parts per billion, it's the same exact setup, the only difference being is that now we're multiplying by a billion as opposed to a million to get that b for a billion there. Alrighty, please keep in mind that when we're using these equations to calculate the concentration of something, it's for very dilute solutions. So we're talking just not even a gram of something in, in a glass of water or a bottle of water because it's very, very dilute. But as mentioned previously, even the smallest amount of lead in water is dangerous. So these concentrations, although small, are still scary. So I want to keep that in mind. All right, so let's jump right into the math of this. We're going to apply these equations. And I know you probably see all these words, right? Horrors from high school and horrors from math and everything. And you see word equations and you think, oh my gosh, five apples plus uh, how many times Sally goes to the hairdresser is why are there aliens on the moon? You know, that's, that's not how these are. And I don't want you to go into this like railroad panic attack when you see words and math together. It's not scary. We're going to break it down together. You can do it. I believe you can. Let's try it. So first and foremost, let me switch over here so you can see what I'm writing. Do, do, do. Alrighty. So here we are. We're going to write on the screen for you. And as you can see, we've got, uh, we have a mass. We have 0 0.0925 grams of something. And we also have the uh, total dissolved solids is what I'm saying. That was in my house when Culligan came out here to test it. And I want to know what was the parts per million then in my 500 gram glass of water. Oops. Let's go ahead and try that, shall we? Let's go ahead and give this a go. We've got up here in our equation, we've got a mass. We have a certain amount of total dissolved solids. That's our solute. So that's the stuff that's going to go on top. We also have a parts per million. We're looking for that. When we read the question, it says, what was my parts per million? So we're trying to solve that. That's our big question mark. When I do math problems, I like to kind of put the question mark as to what is it they're asking me for. I need to know what the goal is so I know where the heck I'm going to begin with, right? The next thing we want to note is, hey, if we're going to extrapolate any more information out of this, we've got another number in there. We have a 500 gram glass of water. Now we are assuming that the 500 grams is just the water inside the glass. So that would be our grams of solution there. So what we want to do now is just plug and chug. I'm sure you've heard that uh, concept before in your life. Basically, we're just plugging in numbers and we're seeing how it all works out. We're going to solve for one variable. If we can get it to that point, then great. We just plug it into our calculator and push the buttons and we get the answer. Ta -da! Well, let's try it. So grams of solute, we said we had 0 0.0925 grams of total dissolved solids. That's TDS. And now again, that's what Culligan determined in my home. And the grams of solution that we have are 500 grams. So we have 500 grams of water in the bottom there. What we want to do then is multiply by 1 million. And once we multiply by a million, that should give us, I'm going to leave a little space there for our answer, our parts per million. And that's the thing we were trying to solve for. So if we're thinking in terms of math, we want to remember our dear friend PEMDAS, especially for equations like this. So again, that stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. If you forgot that from way back when, we want to please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And we want to do this in order of operations in order to get the right answer. So the first thing we got to do is take care of this guy right here. We're going to pretend like we've got it in parentheses, right? That would be the very first one. That's technically together when you have a ratio, they're grouped together. 
And then we're going to worry about that multiplication there afterwards. So if we divide those two numbers, we plug it into our lovely little calculator over here, 925 divided by 500, that gives us 1.85 times 10 to the negative 4. That's the same as 0 0.12318. Now we need to multiply that extremely small number by a million. All right, so if we do that, we multiply by a million and we get 185 parts per million. And if you check over at my, uh, my little table over here, that is what was determined from the Culligan guy that came and tested my water. So we know we did it right, 185 parts per million. Excellent. All right. How about this next one? This is if we're going to switch the equation around. So let's read the question first. If 2018 data shows that fluoride concentrations in the Portsmouth drinking water were around 0 0.78 parts per million, how many grams of fluoride are in 400 grams glass of water? Again, we're assuming this is only the water, not the glass. We don't really care about the glass. So let's go ahead and give this one a shot. First and foremost, we want to remember that we are using parts per million. So we're going to be using the equation where we multiply by a million. Let's actually get that on the screen first so we don't forget our equation. That's pretty important. And then we'll jump back over here to our math. So. We've got our equation at the bottom. Let's first identify what we have and what we're looking for. What we have this time is we're given a parts per million. That was in the data. That was actually the real data, by the way, from 2018. So we're given that number. We are also given 400 grams of a glass of water. And that would again be our solution or solvent. And then in this case, they're asking us to solve for grams of fluoride. Fluoride would be our solute. So that's kind of like our X. We're gonna put an X there just like we do in math class, just to kind of hold our spot. If an X makes you uncomfortable, if you're having tremors from remembering that, maybe just put a smiley face there instead. Give yourself a big old smile, right? No big deal. Can't be scared of a smiley face. All right, so let's give this a try. What we want to do now is set up the equation. So we've got x or your smiley face, right? We don't want to be, be like, you know, pushing too much math here. There we go. So x smiley face over the grams of solution we have, which was 400 grams. And in this case, we're talking about parts per million. So we're still going to multiply by 1 million. And we're going to set that equal to the given value of 0 0.73 parts per million. Now we need to isolate x to solve for x. So again, we're going to remember our little PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We need to keep these together since that's a ratio. So in order to isolate the x alone, we need to get everything on the other side of the equal sign. Since this is multiplying, the way we undo multiply is divide. So the first thing I need to do is divide both sides. What I do to one side, I need to do to the other by one million. So I'm gonna do that here. Now when I divide the left side by a million, this cancels out because a million divided by a million is just one. It's nothing. So now over here, we have a value that we can divide. So 0 0.73 divided by 1 million ends up being 7.3 times 10 to the negative 7, or e negative 7. That would be 6 zeros, so 0 0.6 zeros, and then 7.3. So pretty small number there. But what we still have on the other side of our equal sign is x over 400. We still need to get x alone, so we're going to need to multiply 400 on both sides. Now the reason for that is because 400 is in the denominator on the left side, so to undo that, I need to multiply, since this is divide, 
to undo divide, we multiply. I need to divide both sides, or multiply both sides, my apologies, by 400. So this will cancel out and be 1. And I also need to multiply this side by 400 now so that I can solve for x. So now in this case, if I multiply my 7.3 times 10 to the negative 7 by 400, I should get an answer of x or smiley face. Keep your smiley face if you want to be happy there, right? If you're happy and you know it, smiley face. Okay, so 0 0.00. 0.292 grams of fluoride. That should be the answer you get if you multiply those two numbers together there. All right, how are we doing? We good? I hope so. Hope you're hanging in there. All righty, let's try the next one. So this one I want you to try. Go ahead and pause the video at this point and give this one a try. I did encourage you to take out some paper and a pen earlier and a calculator, so do give it a try. Just watching me do it will not help you in the long run if you don't try it yourself. Go ahead and pause the video and try this. I'll wait for a second and then I'll go over it. Have you paused it yet? I hope you've paused it by now so you can try it. You should pause it. Okay, let's get started. So. This is a very similar one to the last one we just did. We are dealing with parts per million and we're noticing it's about copper. Doesn't matter. We've talked about TDS now. We've talked about copper. Doesn't matter what it is. We've gotten fluoride in the last one. We can still use the same equation. We just need to know which one is solute, which one is solution, and what the parts per million is or parts per billion, but we'll get there. So first and foremost, we are given parts per million. So we are given that value. We have 400 grams glass of water. That's our solution. And we also have the information of how many grams. They're asking us how many grams of solute, of copper, is in our water. So that would be this top part, our x. So again, let's go through and just set up our equation first and foremost. Let's put our little smiley face over here. That's our X. And our grams of solution are 400. So we have 400 grams glass of water. And it's parts per million, so we know to multiply by a million. And that's equal to 0 0.194 parts per million. Now, just as we discussed last time in this last question, we need to do our order of operations first. So in order to get smiley face alone, we need to divide off the million first. So we're gonna do that so we can cancel it out on both sides. And then when we divide 0 0.194 by 1 million, we get 1.94 times 10 to the negative 7. Set equal to, don't forget to drop down your equals there, smiley face over 400. Now to get smiley face alone, hopefully you recall that to undo division, we need to multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides by 400. And what you should get is that your smiley face is equal to 0 0.00007766 grams of copper. So in other words, in one glass of drinking water, there is that much copper that the person is ingesting at 0 0.194 parts per million, which indeed would be pretty much my drinking water <laughs> since that is what Portsmouth drinking water data came back as. Alrighty. So what's next? Now we need to consider parts per billion. So we pretty much beat to death this parts per million thing. Let's jump over to parts per billion now. The only difference between this equation and the last one is that we're multiplying by a billion or dividing by a billion relative to what we're solving for. So let's give this a try. According to the 2018 data in Portsmouth, 
there was determined to be 0.000001 grams of lead present. Hmm. So then what was the parts per billion of that lead in a single 500 gram glass of water? All right. First and foremost, let's identify what we have. We have a mass of lead that's a solute, something that's dissolved in the water. So we have this top part in this question. We also have 500 gram glass of water. That is, again, our solution or our solvent. So we have the bottom part of our ratio. Excellent. And what they are asking us to solve for is the parts per billion. What was the parts per billion? So what was this? That's our question mark, our big question for today. So let's plug and chug these guys into an equation. Grams of solute, we've got 0.000001 grams, whew, that's a lot of zeros, divided by 500 grams, multiplied by, in this case it's parts per billion, so remember you need to multiply by a billion, again lots of zeros, and that's equal to what in parts per billion? What was the parts per billion in Portsmouth drinking water? So first things first, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Here's our parentheses. We're going to divide that first and then multiply by 1 billion. So if we have 0 0.000001 divided by 500, we end up with 2 times 10 to the negative 9. And we're going to multiply that now by a billion. Alrighty, let's try it. So multiplied by a billion gives us two parts per billion as our answer. So that is how many parts per billion of lead is present in 2018 in Portsmouth drinking water. So for every glass of water, every 500 gram glass of water, there was that much weight, that much mass of lead, or two parts per billion per glass. Alrighty, let's try the next one. As of July 2019, the same issue is beginning to happen in Newark, New Jersey. We're seeing that there is lead leaching into the water as well, and people are also being given bottles of water to try and sustain themselves and not get poisoned with lead. They have found that there's about 55 parts per billion of lead thus far, and we want to know how many grams of lead that means there is in every glass of drinking water for the, the inhabitants of Newark, New Jersey. Let's go ahead and give this one a try. Alrighty. First, identify what we have. Always, that's the first step. We've got 55 parts per billion of lead. Well, that's going to fit right here with our PPB. So we've got that part down. We also are given 400 gram glass of water. Again, that's going to be our solution or our solvent. Those are interchangeable. And what we're looking for then is how many grams of lead does that mean someone is ingesting with every glass of water they drink? So how many grams of solute, lead being the solute there? Let's give this guy a go. Alrighty, so the grams of solute is going to be our smiley face, again that's like our X, divided by the grams of solution, our 400 grams, and we're going to multiply that by 1 billion, we're talking in terms of parts per billion, we know that from up here in the actual words, if you read them, you got to read them to know where to go with it, and we're going to set that equal to 55 parts per billion. So this is one of the cases where we have to kind of undo what we did going forward. So you kind of have to think reverse here. First things first, we know that this is together. That's in the parentheses. So we need to get rid of the billion first in this case to isolate our smiley face alone. So here to undo multiply, we need to divide both sides by a billion. Drawing all these zeros is going to give me a headache, man, I tell you. My goodness. All right. So that cancels out that side. And 55 divided by a billion. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boop. So that gives us 
5.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Now from there, we still need to carry down this equal sign. And don't forget our smiley face over here. We don't want to make him sad. Over 400. Now to isolate the smiley face by himself, we need to undo divide. So we're going to undo divide by multiply. Oh, let me pick a different color. There we go. By multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides by 400 to get smiley face alone. And what we should end up with is smiley face is equal to, in this case, let's see, 0 0.00022 grams of lead. Now that might not seem like a lot, but I want us to take a second to pause here. That's in one glass of drinking water. A standard glass of drinking water. Now if you're drinking eight glasses of water a day, which you should, that's pretty much equivalent to drinking 0 0.000176 grams of lead. Okay, and I, all I did was multiply this number by eight for eight glasses of water, and you would get that much lead in your daily serving. Hmm, and that's just drinking water. That's not including cooking, right? If you're cooking food and that water you're cooking it in, spaghetti or whatever it is you're using water to cook for, right? This is actually a problem. You can see how you could ingest a lot more lead than you think, because again, this is per cup. So let's go back and try it with Flint, Michigan's data. If you remember from the video, that home, the Walters household, had 13,000 parts per billion, one of the highest, that is the highest, I believe, that was recorded in all of Flint, Michigan's tap water. So that's a huge number, way over the EPA guidelines. And we want to know how many grams of lead were that, was that family ingesting with every glass of water. So let's go ahead and set this up. First, we know our 13,000 parts per billion go here. We're trying to find the grams of lead that's our solute to go there. And we know we're given 400 grams as our sol solution or our solvent for our denominator over here. Okay. Let's go ahead and set this up, shall we? The grams of solute, I'm going to use this an X this time. Feel free to keep using a smiley face or a heart if you please. Um, so grams of solute is what we're looking for. There's our grams of solute. So I'm going to use an X in our numerator this time. And the grams of solution is 400 for our glass of water. This is parts per billion because the question told us so. It gave us something in parts per billion. So we have to use parts per billion. So we're going to multiply parts per billion or a billion. And we're going to set that equal to 13,000 parts per billion from the poor Walter family household. From here, we need to first divide off our billion to get that alone, get our x alone. So let's divide off all these zeros on both sides. So I'm just going to do like ditto, right? So 13,000 divided by 1 billion, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Whew. That's 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. We're going to bring down our equal sign still and keep that other side. We still need to get x alone. In order to do that, we see that there is a division here on the left side, so we need to multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides by the same value. And what we end up with now is that x equals 0 0.0052 grams of lead. That's a huge amount, huge amount. That's in one glass of water, you guys, one glass of water. They were ingesting that much lead. So if you think about it, 
in terms of, well, hey, how much were they ingesting then in a day if they're drinking eight glasses of water a day, which they should, they would be, multiply this by eight, drinking 0.0416 grams of lead just in their drinking water. That's a huge issue. Huge, huge issue. All right. So what? So what? What's the whole point of this then? What, what's the big deal, right? What is the big deal? The big deal is that when we look at the EPA guidelines, they say that 15 parts per billion, yeah, you're, you're pretty much in trouble. If you get it to that point, you in big trouble. You're gonna, you're definitely gonna get spanked for it, right? But when we're thinking about what the Walters household was like, 5,000 parts per billion is classified as toxic waste. Toxic waste. And the Walter family household had 13,000 parts per billion, more than double more than double what toxic waste would be considered. So if you look at this picture, that's kind of right above my head over here, that's pretty much what it would look like at an atomic level or at a molecular level. Remember, we can't see lead, we can't taste lead, we can't smell lead. So if you were to look at it from an atomic standpoint or a molecular standpoint, that's what it would look like. All of that lead in there, all nasty-like, right? That's your 13,000 parts per billion, or what they would have been drinking, what we calculated as 0.0052 grams of lead in every single glass of water. All right. So last but not least, what are these so-called parts? I keep saying parts per million, parts per billion. What are the parts? Well, I'm gonna leave you on a cliffhanger for that one because we're gonna go into those parts in a later lesson, which I will link to this video as well. Those parts we're gonna get back to in chemistry are atoms. So I want to teach you next about atoms, what they're made up of, why they're important, and a little bit of history about those parts, our atoms. Pretty much the thing that makes up every chemist's best dreams, right? So here are the practice questions I promised you at the beginning of the video please give them a try. I will be giving you the answers to these at the start of my next mathy video, my chemistry calculation video, so that you can check your answers. I'll also link that in this video so that you can quickly check your answers after you have tried them. Wishing you the best, and I hope that you ducking love science just a little bit more. See ya.